the next part of the session, uh, if you recall earlier today, I talked about this arc for us of starting with tribal sovereignty, moving to equity, targeted universalism, belonging, the vital conditions for well-being, leading with love. And so this next section is really about a piece, an element of the vital conditions for well-being, which is if we're going to use that kind of a framework, how are we going to know if anybody's well-being is actually changing because of the work that's being done? And so um, Matt Main on our team is going to lead this session. It's going to include some folks that are out here in the audience. Uh, yesterday, we actually had uh, four of our communities of practice meeting, and one of them was this kind of measuring data uh, group. And this notion of, you know, and I'm trying to remember the words, wherever Jason McGill is. Um, I just can't not mention you, that's my, <laughs> but uh, the vital conditions for well-being talk about people who are suffering, struggling, thriving, and your words are not that. There's like surviving, striving, and thriving. And, and so we're just really, it's like, how do we move people from that suffering space to a space, because when I think of uh, North Sound ACH, and you know, we talk about missions and visions and things, um, about now almost two years ago, our board actually did away with our mission statement and replaced it with a purpose statement. And so our purpose, the reason we exist, is to create a just and inclusive culture and the necessary conditions for all community members to thrive. And Whenever we try and figure out, so like if we find money from this corner or this corner, how are we leveraging it and why? We always go back, that's the reason the ACH exists. So this community of practice that's been meeting, and Matt will tell you about it, uh, we're trying to somewhat build a bit of a momentum and movement to start using some measures so that we can start talking about what's the impact of the work that you all have been doing and you know, we've been really grateful that uh, we've been, you know, been able to do some conversations with the folks who look at the indigenous um, health indicators, how that kind of plays into this work around measuring well-being. And so that's what you get to hear from next. So thank you so much. I'm going to turn this to Matt, who tells me he doesn't need a stage. But there you go. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Liz. Um, if any of you were at the convening in January, um, I brought my notes today so I can stay a little more in a box. But um, yeah, I'm gonna talk to you about the measuring well-being community of practice and what we've been doing uh, over the last eight months. Um, so we started out, we kinda got the initial group together um, with some interested folks at that convening. Um, and we've been meeting monthly since then. Um, grappling with that that question that Liz raised, right? How are we going to um, measure the impact of what we're doing? How are we going to measure well-being and see how our work is, you know, hopefully positively affecting that for folks? Um, so kind of following some examples that exist out there in the world already, um, with this community of practice, we started developing a survey, a measuring well-being survey. Um, which I, will capture a piece of well-being, right? It's going to give us kind of some of those data points, give some people some opportunity to, um, you know, put in their own words a little bit about what well-being or belonging means to them. Um, but that's a piece of it, right? Um, so with some really, I think, crucial guidance from Monty and Stacy with community initiatives, we've also been working on a dialogue piece of this. So um, really trying to drill into the story behind just what, you know, you know, some data points. We want more than a dashboard. We want more than, you know, just extractive, kind of do this survey, give us your information. We're going to put it in a box and use it how we see fit, right? We want to um, bring folks who are doing this survey who are engaging in these dialogues um, 
to, to really have that voice and to share in telling that story and creating a region where we all can thrive. So that's, that's what we've been doing for the last eight months. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to say that um, actually last month we started uh, kind of a, we, we started with the term pilot, but we, we dropped that and we're treating it more like a slow rollout. So um, we've started to get the well-being survey out into the world a little bit um, and are starting to see some interesting things. Um, we had our first, uh, uh, Joni actually with Health Ministries Network put on their first well-being dialogue like last week. Joni, is that right? Wherever you are? Yeah. Um, and then as Liz mentioned, so our community of practice met yesterday um, where we did a little more of like kind of a dialogue orientation and um, actually held a dialogue ourselves on well-being um, to really get a feel for what it feels like to, to go through that process, how to facilitate it. Um, yeah, so it's, it's been a little bit of a journey, but over the last eight months, we've gone from just talking about it, having this idea to actually having some tangible stuff that we've been, we've been doing. Um, the theme for this convening is collaboration. I think that's why we wanted to spotlight this, because we've, through this process, um, it's been really iterative, collaborative, you know, we sit on things, we think about them, we come together. Um, and this survey, I think, is a really good example of, you know, how a group from a lot of different sectors can come together, you know, find some, some common ground and move forward with something that we feel is super important. And I don't want you to just hear from me. Um, so we're gonna give uh, some folks, if they're willing in the community of practice to have, uh, or if you're not, you know, haven't been in the community of practice but joined us yesterday, um, wanted to give you all a chance to hear from, from some of them. Um, I have a couple guiding questions up here. Um, what has been your experience collaborating in the measuring well-being of community of practice? And what has been your, experiment, or your experience implementing the well-being survey and well-being and belonging dialogues? Uh, if anyone wants to speak about those, they can. If you want to say something else, the, the floor is yours. I think just throw your hand up and I think Marco or Mario can can run a mic to you. Okay, um, I'm Joni Hensley, and I'm a faith community nurse with the Health Ministries Network, which is a partner in the network. And so I've had the pleasure of working with Matt and Stacy and Monty and the group, and it's been amazing. Um, lots of good coaching, lots of good talking together, and just kind of getting to meet each other over Zoom. So it was nice to see everybody to, uh, yesterday. Um, so at the Health Ministries Network, uh, we are a network work of faith-based um, organization. We provide support to nurses who may be serving their congregation. And some of us actually serve out in vulnerable communities um, right now in Whatcom County. So I wanted to just share with you, we had, our, we had a nursing retreat. And so we invited our nurses over to Lummi Island. It's a beautiful island if anybody's interested. Um, and what we did was set the stage by giving the nurses the well-being survey to sort of launch us into, okay, now let's talk about the dialogue. Um, many of our nurses are older, um, and so it was important to us to do a little bit of training about QR codes. And actually, everybody had a good time. Um, and, uh, and most of them did fill out with the QR codes. Um, the other thing is, is that we broke into small groups. We had some great facilitators to sort of lead the discussion. And it was really important that we emphasize what our goal was in administering this survey and in talking with our nurses. Um, and our goal was to better understand perceived challenges and opportunities in our faith communities. And so we only chose one question. Um, please share your name. Uh, or would you describe well-being in your faith community now? Um, what contributes to well-being and what is the greatest barrier? Um, I think what kind of came out big time with this dialogue was that some of the nurses were experiencing some things in their congregations that were not comfortable or that they were having issues about. And it was nice that they could see that others were having the same issues. So there was that camaraderie, there was a little bit of problem solving, and it was amazing. So thank you, Matt, for leading us down this journey.
Thank you, Joni, and thank you for sharing. Um, is there anybody else who wants to pop their hand up or anyone who was with us yesterday who participated in those dialogues who wants to share anything about that? Nobody else wants to public speak. I'm totally fine just taking up the rest of the air in here. Okay, I will go ahead and move forward. Um, maybe, let's see. There we go. Um, yeah, so the, the survey and the, the dialogue piece, um, really excited about being able to start to roll these out. Um, the, the survey, we go through um, kind of a couple different measures. We ask the Cantrell's Ladder question, which for anyone who is here at the last convening, you kind of got a taste of that, that um, you know, if you imagine a ladder with steps zero to 10, um, with 10 being your best possible life and zero being your worst possible life, um, you ask folks to, to put themselves on that ladder now and then imagine where they're gonna be five years from now. And that's how you can kind of break into that um, uh, thriving, struggling, and suffering um, framework there. Um, you know, a lot of other questions we ask about belonging a bit, um, which, which really came um, you know, kind of from going to the Othering and Belonging Conference uh, with, with some of the ACH staff a, a few months back. Um, that really helped inform this survey kind of in the later stages. Um, and also gets to that centerpiece of the, uh, the vital conditions for well-being, right, where belonging and civic muscle is at the center. So really trying to get a, a, a feel for where folks are at with these kind of things. Um, and then the, the dialogue pieces, we, um, you know, we ask about what well-being means to people because that's a big phrase, right? I could say well-being and you could hear it a hundred different ways or everyone here is gonna have a different definition for what that means to them. So we keep it, um, you know, really subjective, personal. We ask a lot about community and people can decide what community means to them, whether that's family, whether that's the city they live in, um, you know, their, their work community. Um, really the goal for this survey and these dialogues from the beginning has not been to tell people what they should be thinking about, but let them come as they are, share how they are, um, so that we can really, you know, really tap into to what the real world is like for people. Um, and then the dialogues. So um, we did have a really good experience yesterday with our dialogues. Um, it was the first time I'd ever sat down and done one um, kind of talking about well-being. Um, and it was, it was great. I feel like with, with my smaller group, we had a little bit of a slow start, but once we started talking a little bit more, right, we found some common ground. We kind of bonded over family and, you know, moving to different places and little, little libraries that we have in our, our neighborhoods. And then we really got to kind of get into, um, you know, really what, what belonging and well-being means to us and things that we could, you know, things that we see in our communities that, that we would want to improve, things that need work. Um, so it was a it was a really special, um, really special hour we spent there. So um, definitely thank you to the group who did that with us. Um, and as Liz said, so we're we're kind of in a stage now where we're building a movement a little bit for this. So um, you know I don't have a ton of time up here, and the the last uh, couple minutes I have left, I want to spend um, as kind of a a call to action to the group. So um, we have some surveys that are starting to come out with folks in our community of practice where we've been troubleshooting some things. Um, but we're in a spot now where we feel confident in bringing on anybody in the region who wants to um, who wants to put this survey out to, to folks that they interact with or folks in their network so we can really start to paint that full picture of what well-being is looking like in the North Sound region. Um, over the lunch, I snuck around and put a bunch of postcards on everybody's uh, tables. Um, you can feel free to take those with you. Those have QR codes um, on each side. One side is gonna give you the well-being survey itself, if you wanna click through there and look at what it actually says. Uh, the other one is a link to a page that I think launched either last night or this morning on the North Sound Resource Library, um, which has a lot of really cool material um, that, that, that we've created, you know, why do we measure well-being? What is a well-being survey? Um, how do I facilitate a dialogue? You know, it's got links to the, uh, the well-being survey itself in English and Spanish. Um, 
as well as the, the dialogue questions that we have there. So um, I will say if anyone's interested in, in coming along with us on that journey, you know, my email's on there. I'm happy to quickly respond to you and figure out how we can make that work. Um, for the couple organizations that have started rolling out the survey with us, I think one thing that's been pretty useful is um, with the SurveyMonkey tool, I've been able to generate like a, a unique link for every organization and then set them up with a little bit of a dashboard where you know you can see survey results in real time. It's all anonymous. Um, but you get that real time, you know, up to date uh, information about what well-being looks like with kind of the folks that you're surveying. Um, so I don't have to send you like a new spreadsheet every time an email or every time a survey get, comes in, you know, there's no spam. Um, but it all also feeds into this bigger regional view and helps us inform what's going on there. So um, outside of that, I want to make sure I didn't miss anything here. Um, yeah, we're, we're collecting surveys through the fall. You know, we don't have a specific end date where we're looking at, um, at uh, you know, ending survey collection at sometime in the fall. So if you feel like you want to collect surveys throughout that time, if you want to like just try it out for a day and see how it feels, that's totally fine. Um, you've got the postcards out there. Um, and we're going to have a, a dialogue orientation and kind of a survey orientation soonish in September. The, the date is TBD, but that'll, that'll go out on the resource page. Um, and in the newsletters, so anyone who's interested can can take a look at that. Um, yeah, but I, I would just like to invite anybody who's interested to come on, help us tell the story of, of well-being in the North Sound region. Um, and as Monty says a lot, you know, help us catalyze change. You know, let's, let's hear the stories of the people that we're serving um, and let them guide us and um, you know, teach us how we can how we can create a better world for for everybody. And that's I think where I'm gonna end. Just a couple minutes ahead of schedule. Oh, a question. Yeah, go for it. Oh, okay. I'm curious if it's a survey that you can give to participants who are youth, or if it's just geared towards. I mean, we've used a Kentrell ladder for youth, but um, wondering about the whole survey. If it's for just adults or more organizations, or if it's for program participants? Uh, it's for anybody. Um, and I think that's that's kind of the beauty of how we've set this up is, um, you know, if you're an organization that wants to figure out what the well-being of your staff is, you roll it out to your staff, you know, that's still going to help us inform that big picture and give us the numbers that we need to start looking at some trends, right? Um, but yeah, adults, we, I don't think we have any questions off the top of my head that would would bar any youth. I mean, it's all, as I said, anonymous. Um, and really just kind of getting at those questions like, you know, the Cantrell's ladder. Um, you know, what does belonging mean to you? What gets in the way of belonging in your community? That kind of thing. So I think there's some some valuable insight there for, for youth for sure. And in our demographics, which are optional as well, we do have, you know, under 18 as an option. So, yeah. Um, ooh, more questions. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, once you have collated all of the um, responses, what kind of programs and activities do you have in mind that you would be rolling out to respond to the results? And are there other agencies that will be involved in those activities? That is a good question, and I think one that I, as I wandered away from the way my notes, I missed. Um, but that's a question I think that we will probably end up putting back to the network. Um, you know, as we collect this information, once we wrap up our data collection, we'll get everything put together. Um, you know, it'll be shared out. Um, we'll figure out exactly what that looks like, but probably some type of report, some type of learning session as we talk about what we've learned. Um, but I would just want to be pretty clear on this. Like, this isn't North Sound data. This isn't my data. This isn't you know, this is this is the region's data. This is data that belongs to the folks who who gave it to us. Um, and I think once we have that and it's out there, that's how we can kind of catalyze that change. And you know, if your organization sees something and they're like, "Oh, I can do something about that," like I didn't know this, but you know, now that we know it, we can we can work on that. Um, yeah, I think that's information that'll go back out to the network and and let us all kind of see where we see where we fit there. Yeah. 
Is it in any other languages? Yeah, so the survey is in English and Spanish currently. Um, if you're working with a population that needs a different language, just let me know because we have plans to, um, you know, uh, translate it in other languages. But if I need to put one at the top of the list, if there's a need, just let me know. Uh, I'm curious if there will be access to data that is more specific, like whether we'll be able to look at towns or counties as well as the sound area in general? I want to say yes, but I'll say yes, but. Um, so in, in our demographic section, we have a, 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 an option for folks to choose the county and the city that they live in. Um, so that is a way we could break down the data. I will say we could break that data down if we have enough responses coming from that area where we don't have to worry about um, kind of small numbers impacting anonymity. But as long as we hit some thresholds, that's something we can do, yeah. All right, well, let's, let's call it there then. Um, you have those postcards on your, um, on your tables. I keep wanting to say desks for some reason. Um, you have them on your tables. Um, they have my email on them. Um, you know, you can, you can ping me through the resource page as well. I believe you can find me on there. Um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to working with, with all of you and seeing how we can start to tell the